As Americans head to the polls in some parts of the country today, questions remain over the integrity of America's voting system. Joining me now to discuss, senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation and co-author of Our Broken Elections, How the Left Changed the Way You Vote, Hans von Spakovsky. Hey, Hans, welcome back. You know, we're seeing the election in Virginia between Terry McAuliffe, Glenn Youngkin, appear very close, whereas Phil Murphy, New Jersey, uh, his Republican opponent that came, uh, well, he has a little bit more of a lead. Since 2020, what strides have both Virginia and New Jersey made in shoring up voting integrity, if any? Well, look, the, our, our book covers all the changes that the left's been trying to make for years. Uh, we saw a lot of them, in particular last year, using the justification of COVID uh, to try to uh, persuade states to do this. Unfortunately, we've We've seen that already in this Virginia election. A, a week or so ago, uh, a lawsuit was filed against the registrar in Fairfax County, Virginia. That's the largest county in the state, a large uh, Democratic vote there, because the uh, local election officials said that they are simply not going to comply with state law that requires voters, when they're requesting an absentee ballot, to put the last four digits of their Social Security number on. The, that's the kind of not complying with state election laws and rules we saw last year. It's very disappointing to see this continuing this year in this Virginia election. Yeah, that they got away with violating the laws in many states last year, and they continue to try to push that. Meanwhile, uh, the Empire State also has a race on for uh, the next mayor of the Rotten Apple, city dealing with massive work shortages due to vaccine mandates. Uh, but voting issues are prevalent there, too. The Orange County DA office planning on looking into why one home requested 718 absentee ballots. Right. Hans, this is a single-family house, but no registered voters living there. Now, what do you make of this story? It sounds like a Democrat dream. Yeah, this look, there's obviously fraud going on. I mean, 700 uh, ballots being requested for a single-family home. Uh, it's nice that they said they're going to investigate it, but they've already sent out 300 ballots uh, to, to this uh, to this home, and so we're not we don't we don't know what's going to happen. I'm assuming those are going to get counted when they come back. So this fraud may actually be successful in uh, submitting lots and lots and lots of fraudulent ballots. I mean, it's it tells you something about the system that it took a while for them to detect this uh, and had already sent out 300 ballots out of the more than 700 mm. that had been requested. Well, back in early February, the Chris Nelsato Show conducted a series of four preambles where I discussed how four of the states, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, and Wisconsin, knowingly violated their own state election laws in uh, the 2020 presidential election. In fact, Michigan had a judge rule that the Secretary of State violated Michigan's election laws, but of course nothing is done. This leads us to your new book. What did you discover in there? What was the most egregious uh, thing that you discovered? Well, look, one of the most egregious things in last year's election was uh, Zuckerbucks, as we call them. We have a whole chapter about Mark Zuckerberg basically pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into a supposedly nonpartisan uh, nonprofit that then gave that money to election officials and election officers uh, almost all of the money going to uh, large urban cities that were big bastions of Democratic votes. In, in essence, uh, Democrats moved their get-out-the-vote campaigns, which is supposed to be paid for with political donations, political money that's reported. They basically used charitable money to move their get-out-the-vote campaign into government offices, something that should not have happened uh, but unfortunately did. Hans von Spakovsky, always appreciate the update, sir. Keep us posted. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.